The next topic for discussion is offshore derivative instruments. You might have heard about them before, or you might have heard about participatory notes or VCP notes. Anyways, let's start with the concept first with an example. MU Enterprises is an entity based at Mauritius and wanted to make investment in the equity shares of an Indian listed company, say X Limited. The simple route is MU Enterprises first register as FPI with an India based designated depository participant and start making investments. But just to invest in one company, MU Enterprises may not go for registration. So what is the solution? MU Enterprises is a financial investor. It intends to earn profits by making investment. It may not be interested to actually holding the security. There is another entity, UK Enterprises based at UK, which is a registered FPI. Now, UK Enterprises has a solution for MU Enterprises. As a registered FPI, UK Enterprises would purchase the same quantity of equity shares of X Limited on the Indian Stock Exchange as MU Enterprises wanted to purchase. For example, shares worth rupees 60,000 or equal US dollars of 1,000. Then UK Enterprises will enter into a contract with MU Enterprises. The contract would say, MU Enterprises will pay the consideration equal to the price paid by UK Enterprises for buying shares of X Limited. In our example, US dollar 1000. UK Enterprises will hold the shares in its name. But, for the benefit of MU Enterprises, the contract would also provide that any profit and loss on the sale of X Limited shares shall be attributed to MU Enterprises. Means, UK Enterprises shall be the registered owner of the shares of X Limited. But any profit and loss shall be transferred to MU Enterprises. Means, MU Enterprises is actually holding a derivative of the shares of X Limited. As this contract derives its value from the value of the shares of X Limited held by UK Enterprises, this derivative is issued out of India. Therefore, it's called offshore derivative instrument. Further, in our example, UK Enterprises would sell the shares of X Limited as per the instruction of MU Enterprises. The entire sale proceeds received by UK Enterprises will be transferred to MU Enterprises. UK Enterprises will charge some 1% to 2% service charges for this. In this transaction, actually, MU Enterprises is ultimately paying the purchase consideration. MU Enterprises is ultimately receiving the sale consideration. MU Enterprises will ultimately be entitled for any profits earned. And MU Enterprises will bear the losses if there are any on sale of the equity shares. UK Enterprises is just a mediator carrying out the transaction for MU Enterprises and holding the securities on its behalf. This contract is called participatory note. Through this instrument, MU Enterprises is participating in the holding of X Limited shares even without registering as FPI in India. Participatory notes has been a very prominent structure for making portfolio investments in India. Currently, foreign institutional investors are allowed to issue the participatory notes. Now, certain FPI will also be permitted to do the same. In the FPI regulations, the legal term for these kinds of contracts is offshore derivative instruments. The definition of offshore derivative instruments, or we say ODI, is given in Regulation 2J of the CB FPI regulations. The definition is Offshore derivative instrument means any instrument by whatever name called which is issued overseas by a foreign portfolio investor against securities held by it 
that are listed or proposed to be listed on any recognized stock exchange in India as its underlying. So, you call it participatory note or equity linked note or whatever. As long as it's covered under the definition of ODI, such instrument will be issued held or dealt with as per the FPI regulations. Issuance of offshore derivative instruments is also governed by the regulations. The main reason for regulating is prevention of any money laundering activity. The regulations provide certain conditions for registered FPI, subject to which FPI can issue offshore derivative instruments. The regulations provide that no foreign portfolio investor may issue, subscribe to, or otherwise deal in offshore derivative instruments, directly or indirectly, unless the certain conditions are satisfied. And those conditions are such offshore derivative instruments are issued only to persons who are regulated by an appropriate foreign regulatory authority. The rationale is, even through offshore derivative instrument, only the regulated entities can make the investments. In our earlier example, if MU Enterprises wanted to make investment through P note, it has to be a regulated entity. Unregulated entities cannot take ODI route to make investment in Indian stock markets. The second condition is such offshore derivative instruments can only be issued after necessary compliance of applicable know your client norms. So, before issuing any ODI, issuer will have to conduct the necessary KYC process of that investor to whom ODI is proposed to be issued. The regulations also provide that two categories of FPI shall not be allowed to deal with ODI, whether directly or indirectly. The first is those unregulated broad-based funds which are classified as Category 2 foreign portfolio investor by virtue of their investment manager being appropriately regulated. And second, Category 3 foreign portfolio investors will not be allowed to deal in ODI. Means only regulated FPI will be entitled to issue, hold or deal with the ODI. And the foreign portfolio investor will have to ensure that further issue or transfer of any offshore derivative instruments is made only to persons who are regulated by an appropriate foreign regulatory authority. In addition to the issue and deal related conditions, the foreign portfolio investors shall fully disclose to the CB any information in such form as the CB.